Hey guys, it's Sam here. I wanted to share with you a way I just saved about a hundred bucks on dealing with a battery issue on my uh, Gen 2 Prius. This is an 05. It had the original battery in it from Japan that came with the car. So um, uh, I bought the car used. So that battery was, you know, 10, 12 years old. So anyways, it was time for a new battery. That one served its uh, purpose well. Um, anyways, uh, you have a couple options to replace the battery on these Priuses. You can either A, um, go to Toyota. They're going to get you for anywhere to three to $500 or more to get the factory Toyota battery back in there. You can B... Um, there's a kit to use an Optima battery that some people are selling online. I would love to give them a shout out, but uh, I just I don't know the name or the contact information off offhand. So if you Google Prius Optima battery 12 volt swap or something like that, you'll find the information with the kit and everything you need. Or if you don't, if you're not worried about getting an Optima deep cycle in there, and you just want to save a few bucks. Um, you can get a $70 battery from Walmart. Um, this is the Max Everstart Max 51. Um, part number is MAXX-51. Uh, I got it for $73 at Walmart. Now, one note with this. If you uh, go into the store, they might try to get you for over 100 bucks for this. Um, you got to go online. Um and check the price online. I found it online on their website for $73, so they match that price. Now, um, if you can't get that price and it's over $100, then it almost makes sense to go with the Optima at that point or shop around. I think Costco has one of these. What you're looking for, guys, is right there. Group size 51. That's the important thing. Um, the other thing you wanna look for is you'll notice on your battery um, that comes out of there, if it's the original Toyota one, there's probably a vent line that comes out the side of the battery and goes down into here. Now, um, this battery has two vents, one on each side. I don't know if you can see that other one there that I've capped off, but um, the only problem here is these vents are different than the original battery, so I had to make that work. Anyways, I'm gonna cover all that with you guys now and how to do that. So, here's what we got. If you've never really opened your, got this deep in the battery on your Prius before, um, this is probably what you're used to seeing. This cover here that is uh, a hassle to get off. If um, you ever are gonna try to take it off, uh, it's almost easier to do it outside of the car or loose, but there's three clips to keep it on. One on the side here, one on this side here and one on the top. Get a screwdriver on it, pop them loose, it'll slide off. Then when you do that, you're gonna get into these, this is the original connector here. Um, so, hey guys, sorry for the interruption there. I just had somebody pull up to my house. It was my mailman, he had a package for me. Anyways, um, so uh, this is your original setup here with this connector. Um, this is the marine connector that I got from uh, uh, Walmart. And you can see the dimensions are pretty similar. It was the closest thing I could find there um, that would put the post, let's see if I can get this thing to stay, that would put the post pretty much in the same place. Um, and so that's why I went with that. And then, so this here came in this box. Then I bought a, for the negative side, I bought this. Um, that's your part there, 15 inches, four gauge. That's actually too long, but it's the, uh, it's the shortest one they had. And this is it here. Um, and you can see I've connected it right where the other negative was. Um, then the last issue that we ran into, you'll see when you get your car apart, is there's this vent that connects to the side of the battery. A couple notes about this vent. If you can see, 
if you're trying to get it out without breaking it, don't spin it. You just want to cock it back and forth and yank it outward. Um, if you spin it, you're going to break a little tab on it um, that I broke, but it didn't matter to me. But if you are trying to save that, if you spin that, um, it sits in the battery like this. If you spin it, it you'll break the tab. You want to just pull out from the battery and maybe, and maybe wobble it like that direction, but pull out. Otherwise, you're going to break your tab. I didn't care about the tab. And then this is the hose. Actually, it was in the car like this. I can tell because that's where the little, there was some gunk there from the grommet that it passed through. And that goes out. So um, in order to deal with that issue, I had to purchase two things. Now this is gonna be specific to this battery. If you get a different battery, um, you may have to adjust these. But um, I got vacuum hose, 730 seconds. And I got the assorted rubber caps. And the reason I got those is just so that I have other sizes if I ever need them. But the only side you really need is 730 seconds. Um, so I took the 730 seconds cap out of here. Um, I cut it about in half lengthwise. I didn't need it as long. But don't cut these too short. And then, if you can see, I just capped. Sorry guys, it's not... A lot of light in there but I just capped the end of the battery where the little cover was sorry about that guys I had another interruption there that was my neighbor stopping by to say hi anyways uh, so then you can see there the vacuum hose on this end I just kind of wiggled it right on the end it's on there really tight it's not going anywhere um, and then I got it through the existing grommet. Now, um, what you're gonna find with this grommet is it's probably gonna be stuck pretty tight to this hose here in your existing battery. So uh, just yank it out, hose and all. Then you can separate it from the hose. It does come apart. And then in order to force this, this fatter hose through it, use a little bit of dish soap um, and it'll slide right through. Um, and then cut it the length you need it and you're good to go there. Um, so I'm gonna pause the video now. Uh, I'm gonna connect um, the uh, negative and I'm gonna connect the uh, uh, some other things and uh, like my power wire for my radio and uh, my, uh, oh, I'll notice you this, I'll show you this real quick guys too. You, you guys probably all know this but I had this uh, charge connector here because I have a battery charger I hooked up to this thing every now and then. It sits sometimes. Um, and this end here on the positive side uh, was not big enough. It fit, it fit around the old, it fit around the old uh, connector, but it was uh, this new connector. You can see the bolt's much fatter on this end. It's. Uh, it was too too small. So what you do is just just snip it, just cut it, and then you can expand it out, and it'll go around where you need it. That's a little trick. And I want to share something else with you guys too. When you're doing this work, if you notice any water down here, in this gap here, or the gap on the other side, or if you're noticing water in your spare tire well down in there, um, that is a known issue with Priuses. Do a search for Prius water in the trunk. Um, but what happens is these things get a crack. I'll just share it with you, right? And mine still has it because I haven't fixed it yet. That's my next. But they get a crack right up in these corners. Right along in here. If you look real close, I got to clean mine. That's going to be another video. Well, there's already videos out for that, so I'm not worried about sharing that. But but yeah, just uh, fix. You get some, um, some 550 uh, auto body seam sealer. Uh, we'll do the trick on that and you seal up both sides just cover it up and uh that'll fix your water problem all right i'm gonna pause the video here guys and um i'll be back when i get some of this stuff connected okay guys i'm back um i had a couple other things that came to mind i wanted to share with you uh, while i was working on all this first of all um there's three connectors here they just plug in on the end of this thing 
they come out pretty easy. So um, that should be pretty self-explanatory. Clip, clip, clip right in there. Um, also, when you're working on this thing, to remove this cover that's in your way, it's one screw up there in the corner and one screw right here. Um, and then you should just be able to wiggle it loose. Then there's this thing that's in your way also. And it sits, uh, how does it sit? It sits like this in this area. It's bolted here and here and here. Now you're also gonna see some bolts on the side. Don't mess with those guys. There's like five or six of them. It's a giant hassle. Best way to get this thing out of the way is the one bolt on top, this bolt 12 millimeter here, and this 12 millimeter here, and then you're done. It's three bolts. That's the way you wanna do it. Leave the brackets on it. Um, the last thing is that I forgot to share with you is the attachment of this marine terminal. Um, you've got to keep in mind this is the original terminal that came out okay and I don't know if you can tell screw that in in the video but even these posts are a little the, the original post is a little smaller um, you're gonna need to when you detach this terminal from that um, unit you're gonna to need to drill this little hole out that it goes through um, so you can fit the bigger post in, possibly. Um, it doesn't take much. I, I think, um, if I remember right, it was 25 64ths, but don't quote me on that, guys. I think that was the drill bit I ultimately used that worked out. Um, and then on the side, there's these little wings that wrap around. You might need to bend those out just a tiny bit um, and then in order to tighten this down with this wing nut, it hits here while you're tightening it. So you actually just just bend this whole piece of metal away a little bit. Just bend it while you're turning it and then just bend it back. It's pretty flexible, guys. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. You can bend it a hair just so that you can um, tighten that down and then bend it right back. Um, so at this point, uh, I'm going to connect up the positive, um, but I just want to show you little by little what was going on here. Um, what I've done is I've connected the negative. Um, you can see the negative there. That's tight. Uh, I hooked up, uh, I got an amplifier in here, um, and my battery chargers. Um, and I've connected the bracket the whole the tie down bracket that this is attached to so I'm going to tighten everything up I'm going to connect the positive and I'll show you guys the end result um, but this actually fits really clean from what I can see so far hold on and I'll be right back okay guys the positive end is hooked up now um, this thing is basically almost in its final configuration I'm going to clip this uh, I'm going to put the cover back on it, um, and you'll see this actually, if you look at the, oh, you know what, before I put the cover on, i got to hook up these power connectors here, guys. Um, let's start with that one, that one, all right, she's alive now. Um, this last connector goes to this black box here. Um, I think it's for the brakes. I think I saw something on there about the brakes. Alright, so we're going to put this cover back on now and see if it fits. Yeah, fits right on. No modifications. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a discoloration there. That's actually from other people getting in here trying to pry this connector up to get to uh, the battery to do jump starts. People that did not realize uh, the connection for jump starts are, is, is actually underneath the hood. Um, but uh, what can you do? Anyways, so um, that's it. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to adjust my cables here a little bit. 
Okay. Um, guys, I guess I will pause the video one more time. I'll put back all the vent work and everything, and I'll give you one more view of that. Okay guys, I want to share a couple tips that I just realized. First of all, there's that screw in there. Um, and the screw, or I'm sorry, bolt there, bolt here, that connects this tubing. You are going to grow to hate that bolt in there. It's a pain. Be very careful getting that in there or you're going to drop it down in that hole. And then you're going to have to reach in there with a magnet or something and might get your hand stuck. That is a giant hassle. Also, one other tip is once you've done all this, just um, feel for your hose in there, make sure nothing's kinked up, your uh, vent hose. And also, um, I had to adjust, um, I had to adjust this power wire so it wasn't sticking straight out and hitting this. You just had to cock it down a hair. And the other last thing is, don't hook up this wire harness yet or put this cover on because you're just going to have to take it back off to put this uh, ducting in so just leave it off until last so now I'm going to hook it up and it goes along here there we go sorry there we go and there we go now we'll put our cover on. Slide this bad boy on here. It's fighting with me a little bit. There it goes. Okay. So that's on. Covers on. Everything's hooked up. Everything's put back together. Um, your leftover parts are going to be the old connector, of course these little battery caps that came with your new battery. Um, your uh, old negative cable and your old vent tubes. Um, these are trash if you want, I suppose you could hold on to uh, this other stuff, if you ever go back to the Japanese battery, otherwise uh, toss them too or whatever. Alright guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. I'm going to put my trunk back together. You ought to know how to do that, so it's not going to be on the vid. Take care. Thanks. Bye.